So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can use Keras to retrain your convolutional neural networks. So now let's talk a little bit about what the concept of retraining actually is in the first place. To start off, a convolutional neural network contains a lot of knowledge. And this knowledge contains things like filters and, and of course dense layers that are able to take the results from lots of filters and actually convert it to uh, essentially probability matrix of, of what could be in an image or in some sort of text or whatever else you're feeding into your convolutional neural network. However, there are a few problems with extremely deep, and in this case, extremely advanced convolutional neural networks. And this problem is that, of course, they need an abundance of data, a flood of data, hundreds of thousands or millions of images to, slightly understand, to even slightly understand the concept of what goes behind these images and to actually understand these images. There are lots of different techniques to try their best uh, and make convolutional neural networks and deep neural networks in general take less data, like one-shot learning, but then that gets to the extreme far end of no data where you only have a few examples examples of images. But what if you're in the middle? You don't have less enough to do one-shot learning, but you don't have enough to do regular deep convolutional neural networks. You're in the middle. Like, for example, if you had half of the MNIST data set, only 30,000 images in total, what would you do? How would you train? And in this case, let's just say that you've got the Kaggle cats and dogs image data set. How would you train on only those many images? And, well, it's quite simple. Retraining is the answer. And, well, the concept behind retraining is that never waste knowledge. Never waste what you know. And so, instead of training new convolutional neural networks on new data, use old convolutional neural networks that already have enough knowledge and just tie them in with new data. Let's talk about that. Now let's just say that you've got uh, a, a convolutional neural network, and this CNN uh, is say VGG19. Okay, so you've got a bunch of you know layers, lot 19 layers in total, uh, and in this case that would be uh, your convolutional neural network, or not, maybe not even specifically VGG19, just a generic convolutional neural network that's been trained on the ImageNet dataset. Now you probably know of ImageNet, it has uh, tens of thousands of different class categories, uh, and it has millions of different image to, images to train off of for convolutional neural networks. And so this CNN takes in a 224 by 224 image, which is what ImageNet, uh, what ImageNet provides. Uh, and so this convolutional neural network's output, uh, which is of course the output of a bunch of filters, uh, is then flattened to make it one-dimensional instead of its two-dimensional um, original version. Uh, and then finally, it's sent over to a bunch of dense layers. Uh, and so in essence, uh, let's just say you've got uh, a two-layer deep dense network. So you've got the first dense layer, uh, which will go ahead and take uh, the output of that flattened, and let's just say this has 512 nodes. 512 nodes there. Uh, and let's just say you've got one more dense layer, and then you've got your output. So this dense layer over here has, say, 1024, and then you've got one last dense layer, which has simply, uh, say, of course, those tens of thousands. Let's just estimate around uh, 10,000 of those different classes, although it probably has many, many more. Um, and so, this is what your convolutional neural network looks like in its entirety. Now you train this uh, for days on end, and of course you get very high accuracy on this data set. And so your convolutional neural network has all the knowledge that it needs to actually understand pretty much all the animals it could, birds, uh, pets, cats and dogs, your pets. It can understand vehicles, it can understand the sky, it can understand a computer, keyboard, printer, monitor, everything. It can understand everything in the ImageNet dataset at least. But from 
from here, you know that your CNN has a lot of knowledge and it can understand many different things, including cats and dogs. Now, how can you take the knowledge that this has and apply it to a different data set entirely? Well, it's quite simple. Say that you train this entire convolutional neural network back to end four records, and you get, say, 97% uh, accuracy, okay? So you've got a very good convolutional neural network with 97% accuracy on ImageNet. Now, that's, that's, that, that's pretty good, actually, very good, actually, for, for these many classes. Uh, but then again, you train a convolutional neural network, say, on the cats and dogs data set, and what do you get? You'll, you'll get, say, I don't know, 90 or 95 percent accuracy at best uh, and of course there are ways technically that you could get a higher accuracy but then again you're only training with a few 10,000 images and it's a very complex task cats and dogs look very much alike for a computer at least because convolutional neural networks don't look at I mean too minute of details I mean they do technically because of course they're computers but they don't understand abstract concepts they understand individual patterns and when patterns are are extremely similar, they get confused. For example, if a convolutional neural network's looking at a TV remote or a keyboard, it's not looking for buttons and a rectangle around it and something maybe holding it and maybe a TV in the background. It's just looking for a sheet of buttons. That's it. And if it's looking for a keyboard, it's quite literally only looking for another sheet of buttons, except these buttons are bigger. And so uh, you can probably tell that convolutional neural networks aren't necessarily the best for understanding extremely abstract and vague repre uh, representations or extremely abstract, vague, and related concepts, uh, which is why you're not able to get very high accuracy. Uh, however, if you take some of the knowledge from the CNN and apply it to a relatively simpler task, like the cats and dogs, you can get high accuracy. If anything, 98, maybe 99% accuracy on such a data set. And so, how do you achieve this? This sounds like magic, doesn't it? How do you achieve it? Well, take a look at this. You've got two different parts to your CNN. You've got this part. You've got the actual convolutions. Okay, and you've also got all the dense layers. And the dense layers act as the feed-forward neural network that'll actually take output from the CNN and convert it to the actual output that the user wants and not just a bunch of filtered outputs. And so how can you apply this to retraining? Well, it's quite simple. Which knowledge here is required for cats and dogs? Well, obviously not the dense layers, because that's applied to everything, so the dense layers are left out. What's left? The convolutions. The convolutions have the main knowledge of the neural network. They know how to extract individual uh, pieces out of the image. They know how to extract a cat's face, a dog's face, a cat's tail, a dog's tail, all from an image. So it knows how to classify a cat's whiskers, etc., etc. It knows. It already has that knowledge of how to classify between different types of cats and different types of dogs, except that you want to fine-tune its weights to work with a different data set. So what do you do? You go ahead and take what's relevant, the convolutions, and you keep it. But you delete all the rest. You delete all of the dense layers. They are gone completely and entirely. They no longer exist. And so the weights that were used for those dense layers are also just completely gone. From here, you're ready to fine tune your weights. However, you're not gonna be fine tuning your convolutions. So what you do is you tell them that they are not trainable. Because you're not trying to train the convolutions. They're already trained. They know how to do this. They're experts at this. But you are trying to train new dense layers. So you apply new dense layers to, to old convolutional layers. And so you've got knowledge having convolutional layers, but you've got completely new, dumb, and random dense layers. And so you go ahead and draw in more dense layers. Say that this time 
you want a similar network architecture, 512 uh, to, say, uh, 1024, and then to this time, instead of 10, uh, and, and since, of course, you're working with many less uh, of these classes, you might not even want such a wide network architecture. You might only need another 512 here and two outputs, whether or not the image contains a cat or a dog. Um, and so from here, though, your dense layers are trainable. Your convolutions, however, are not trainable. And so if you were to take a look at this, what this means is that your dense layers are going to gain new knowledge. However, your convolutions will keep their older knowledge, what they've known for so long. And so what this means is that now you can go ahead and retrain this neural network. The convolutional neural network stays as it is. It stays as a pre-trained feature extractor. And then once it extracts features off of an image, those features will go to a neural network, which will classify and will get better and better over time at classifying between whether or not it is a cat or a dog. And now you've solved the main problem while training convolutional neural networks which is that you're not training the convolutional neural network in the first place. Because you see, these parts require a lot of data. These parts require quite a bit of data. And so, what, what this means is that your convolutional neural network does not, uh, does not need to be trained in the first place. And because of this, you do not need as much data. And that's why, when you preserve older knowledge, you're able to go from 94% all the way to around 98% accuracy, which is actually a big jump in accuracy. You're going from 94 to 98. It's 4% more accurate when classifying between a cat and a dog, which is a very, very noticeable change, especially when the user is uploading their own images that might be completely different from the data set, when they're moved around, and, and especially when you use data augmentation and you start to crop and you start to transform your image in so many different ways, you can get even higher than 98 in some cases. And in fact, that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do in this video series. Now, this was part one to an entirely new video series dedicated to convolutional neural networks, and in this case, retraining your convolutional neural networks. However, in the next part, I'll show you how I actually implemented this with an ImageNet neural network, like VGG19, or VGG16, or a ResNet, or something of this sort, maybe even ImageNet, but we'll get that back, get to that in part two, where I'll show you how you can actually implement this and create a cat dog classifier like this one that'll take an image of your cat and dog and tell you whether it's a cat or if it's a dog. Uh, and so that's going to be it for this video today. I explained to you what the actual concept behind retraining. So thank you very much for joining in today. That's going to be all for the video. If you really do like the video, please make sure to leave a like down below and share it with your friends or family if you think it could help them as well. If you have any more suggestions, questions, or feedback, please do leave it in the comment section down below. Tweet it to me at tagimani at gmail.com or email it to me at tagimani at gmail.com or tweet it to me at tagimani. Of course, though, if you really like my content and you want to see more of it, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as well, as it really does help out a lot. And of course, turn on notifications if you'd like to be notified whenever I release new content by clicking the bell icon beside the subscribe button below. So thank you very much for joining in today. That's going to be all for this video. Goodbye.